Oh man, what's going on? Look at that thing. Everybody says, why aren't you diving Frank? Well, let's get in here real quick and I'll show you why. Why don't you know if I need to get in? Um, These windshields are still mucked up. That's the problem. That's why I'm not driving Frank. That's why I didn't do anything with Frank. That's why Frank's sitting here. Because I need to find somebody to cut me glass still. Um, You know, I, I called about 10 different places around here. And everybody gave me the run around. Because nobody wants to do it. So, that's why I'm not driving Frank. Yes, I understand there's more room, people. I'm not fucking retarded. Even though that seems to be the case around here. When you get silly questions all the time on. Why aren't you driving a truck that has more room than the truck you're driving but it's just what it is oh let's see if this thing will fire up this thing hasn't fired up probably i it, at least possibly three months yes i've got this plastic sitting right here because i i replaced this window and the seal never got around to doing that one yet so oh we got battery oh my god just like that probably should have checked the oil first but um oh well pressure looks okay voltage is low i'll probably wail on it here in a little bit i wonder if it'll pop up fuel gauge is kind of jacked up um short in there somewhere it's pulling it down we'll get out and get a little twiggle real quick but belt squealing sounds pretty smooth yeah i just got that plastic there because um like I said, that one still leaks. I bet I got air leak too back here because I always keep the air in the... Turn the radio on, maybe. Build some air. Yeah, sounds like. Right. Besides that belt squealing under there. Don't look too shabby. Besides the spider webs. Central. You know, I wondered if there was any critters or anything up in there. Oh, yeah, bell. No. Little puff. Plus, I've got a few oil leaks I've got to take care of on that truck um, before I would really want to run it over the road. That way, I'm not sitting there constantly dumping. Um, oil in there and stuff and or getting harassed by dot um i i don't i can't stand this right here on the blue truck okay i can't stand that so and it, it doesn't really get on the tanks too much but this truck um it gets on the tanks and i i don't want black anywhere on anything if i'm running something you know what i mean Yes, and this truck would be for sale for the right price. People ask, is the green, is Frankenstein for sale? Yeah, I'd sell it. Everything has a price, people. Everything around here has a price. Beetle, station wagon, blue chalk, green chalk, Cadillac, grandma's chalk, everything has a price. Now, I'm not just gonna give it away, so don't come with some cheesy offer like, I'll give you 20,000 for it, and I'll say, bend over, I'll show you where you can stick at 20,000. On the show. On the Chad Tegan YouTube channel.
keep that air build up. Oh man, even my backpacks are down. Jesus Christ. Low rider. Flip this thing around. I need to put some air in this tire. It's um a little low. It had a leak. I thought my buddy we fixed it, but uh, apparently not. Had a leak up in um up in here around the seal. And I thought we fixed it, but apparently we didn't. This thing could use a cleaning. This old Frankenstein truck could use a good old cleaning, if you know what I mean. And, um, this thing hasn't been cleaned since it was parked, pretty much. Maybe washed. Um, no polish, no not, no tanks. I, I just haven't been home, you know what? I just haven't been home to do the stuff. And if I was home, I'm working on this truck because it's what's making my money. I just don't have time for this, dude. I don't have time for anything. Barely have time to fucking eat and sleep and, you know, figure out where I'm going for my next load and stuff like that. I'm a busy man. I'm extremely busy. I don't have time to read your stupid memes on Messenger, so quit sending me stupid memes on Messenger. I don't have time to watch TikToks you send me either. I don't have time to stop over and see you if I'm in your area. If I'm parked somewhere and you happen to see me sitting there, you're more than welcome to come and talk to me. But no, I'm not coming over. No, I'm not coming out of my way. And no, I'm not getting a hold of you. I'm working. If I'm going, the only place I'm going or I'm getting a hold of is my wife and saying, hey, baby, I'm coming home finally because I'm done and I got a load coming back north. Other than that, I don't have time to see people. There's two or three people that I would stop and go out of my way to see if I was en route and I knew I could take some time and stop and see them. That's it. I'm not going out of my way to see anybody. I appreciate the support and all that stuff, but what you need to understand is I don't have time to look you up if I'm in your area or I don't have time to um, get a hold of you so we can go out to eat. Now, I was walking down the street and a couple recognized me, Kendall and, um, God, I think Sherry. I don't want to say your name wrong because it was quick. And um, other than that, I, I, if you see me out, you're more than welcome to stop and say, hey, what's up? If you see me in the truck or you see me around, if not, don't touch my truck. Give me some privacy. If I'm out there sleeping and you see it me at night, don't be a douchebag. Come up talking all out at 5 o'clock in the morning and my windows are open and my blinds are down. You know what I mean? Just take pictures and go on your merry way and say, hey, I seen you. I appreciate guys that do that. There is a guy that was at uh, Iowa 80 that seen me, but um, it was at night, so he just took pictures and stuff like that. Then the next night, he seen me cruising up. He got a hold of me and was like, oh, man, I seen you over there, but, you know, you were sleeping, so I left you alone. Magnifice. Don't be a douchebag to nobody. Nobody you see, because nobody's got time for that, man. What you need to understand is we're out here working. We're not just doing stuff for you because at some point in time, people are going to get fed up and they're going to quit doing things. I can tell you that much right now, and I'm almost to that point, so... And no, I'm not trying to be a dick or anything like that. I'm just being honest. I'm just being real. Unfortunately, you don't have that with people a lot of times, but then you do have that and everybody's like, oh, he's an asshole. He's this, he's that. No, he's just trying to live his life and do what's best for him. Uh, I'm not out here for anybody else. I'm not out here for YouTube or anything like that. I'm out here for me to do what I want to do with the blue chalk and... Um, what's good for me. That's why I bought that truck in the first place. I always thought it would be cool to take it over the road and, and do what they did back in the day and live that kind of lifestyle. I'm doing that. I'm living my best life. Good for you if you're in a brand new truck or you're some company driver that you think you're this and that and all a bag of chips. I don't fly and give a fuck, you know what I'm saying, frankly. I'm out here for me and nobody else, okay? So that's all there is to that. And no, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just being honest. Understand and respect it. Opinions, yeah, let me tell you something really quick. It don't really matter to me. You know why? Because I'm going to do what I want to do anyways, yeah. Ooh, a little macho man for you. <coughs> Let's get in a truck. Take it for a ride. Uh, just got done throwing on the new bubble mirror that I picked up from the shop when I was there. Chrome shop. There's a business card in the blue chalk I'll put up from when we did the bumper. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't have the um, 
hubcap simulators on. I tried to put them on when I was over at James Pree's after the um, semi-casual show and it just didn't work out, so they're not on. But uh, hopefully one of these days I'll get back down there and we'll get them on, but until then, they're just not on. And um, that's how the truck's gonna sit with those steel wheels on it. You know, Frank got the aluminum. Get up in here, up in here. We got the music go crank, man. We got to turn her down here in a minute. Got to turn it down. Down, down, down. Got to turn it down. Down, down, down. I... I, I was just jerking this around because it was kind of stiffened up on me and yes, you're just on a baby tripod right now. So probably not gonna get the best view, but at least you're getting a view in the Frankenstein. Don't forget everybody. The way you're driving the Frankenstein. Ah. Remember things are full water. I didn't even realize there's some lady walking here. I'm just trying to honk at the old lady here. And um, there's somebody walking. That probably scared the crap out of me. Well, it ends here. Let's see if we can get it into gear. Yes. Oh, man. These brakes are frozen up. been a while man finally got these things to break free and um only drug them that far before i uh got out again and started banging on them man crying out loud so now we got them broke free let's get on the road real quick not a big trip just um oh, that's really cool just a little trip like we used to go down to on um, like the fire station
bumper and the gear. Belt squeal in here. Oh man, it's been a while for this old truck. Oh yeah, that brake's just locking up back here. Oh, that's why it could. About 180 on the water temperature, 1300 volts on the 13 volts on the um, battery, 40 psi on the oil, 700 rpm, 7000. Bam, bam. Here's up. Uh, this uh, fuel isn't and then uh, isn't either, but it's just what it is. It's um. Frankenstein truck. What do you expect? It hasn't ran for on full. No jakes. Kind of disappointed in that. I have to get down there and twiddle, twiddle some stuff from them, probably. No main. Uh, let's take her back home. She's just walking and just wheeling. Shift's really nice, though. Um, Bam, 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 
Okay, so let's just leave that down like that. What I do know, what I can tell you, is that this thing would still run, and this thing would still haul them, and this thing would still make the money. I can tell you that much right now because um, it fired up. It uh, shifts well. Uh, sounds good, smells good. It's really comfortable because of the air ride and stuff like that, but um, for me... That's my money maker right now, so it's just what it is. I'm gonna go clean these stones up real quick, so no mean, no mean. I don't know if this is where I had it before. I may have it a little bit closer than what I did before. Um, man, I can get that wagon in there just fine. It's fine where it's at. Uh, I think I might have had it back even a little bit farther, but um, yeah, I just ran that thing down the road. Let's do a 90 day recap real quick. Let me go in and grab a beer because I need one. And then I'll come back out. I'm going to sit where you, I can see both the trucks in the background. And we're going to do a 90-day recap on um, what I've experienced so far out on the road. Um, how it's been living out on the road. Things like that in a 40-year-old tractor, etc., etc. All right. I've got uh, another light here and a bunch of candy. Because um, it's about... It's a mid-September. I think it's the 18th Sunday, and um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Maybe I'll bring you a little bit closer. I don't know. I can see you fine, but um, hopefully you can hear me. There's a Flat Rock, Flat Creek, something like that festival that happens in Paulding, Ohio, and they have an antique truck show every Sunday during that festival, and I've never made it there once. Um, I've had people say, oh man, I wish I would have seen you, blah, blah, blah. Like, somebody got a hold of me last night and said, hey, you going this and that? And I said, look, dude, I'm not sure if I'll make it or not. I got to do some things out of the truck. I don't necessarily have a lot of time when I'm home because, um, you know, I've got uh, four and a half acres here that I got to cut every time I come back. I've got... Um, I got work on the truck because it's about my only time to actually jack the cab up and, and get tools out and tear things. Now, I could do that at a truck stop if I need to. It's not a big deal. I did it um, last weekend when I was in South Carolina because uh, old Josh Dilly got a hold of me and said, Hey, if you're going to be at this place, um, there's a good Mexican restaurant here. We can... Um, get something to eat blah 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 and i said okay so then i met him there and um sunday morning i jacked the cab up and i went and i hooked up the um street horn back up because that stupid ass air horn i had hooked up before just didn't seem to work out and um the regulator was bad uh, i bought a new regulator and then it would just piss air and stuff so i was like forget it i'm just gonna hook the street horn back up because that's what i need to do so that's what i did um and that is when Kendall and Sherry end up seeing me. I was walking across uh, a on-ramp. They were coming on off-ramp, and they, they seen me walking across, and he said, is that Chad? And she said, I don't know. It looks like him. He said, oh, my God, let's, let's keep on going. So they were going to pick their daughter up from uh, the restaurant she worked at because she's like 16 or 17 and um, doesn't drive or whatever. I don't know. So they went to the gas station. I walked by. He just kept on watching me. He's like, man, that's got to be him. 
So when I was going into this restaurant, he pulled over and he's like, Chad, Chad. And I turned around, I was like, what's up? And it was just insane that they had actually recognized me from 600 miles away from my house. And he's like, man, I love watching your channel because you're real and you're you. I'm not trying to fake. I'm not trying to be anything else. That's why I said, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just being honest. You know, I'd rather be honest with you than lie to you. Um, so let's get into the 90 days of what I've dealt with on the road and um, how I'm doing this and that because I don't want anybody to just jump out here and think that, hey, this is all um, unicorns and rainbows because it's not, man, if you're not mentally tough, and me and Kendall had the same conversation, if you're not mentally strong, this will break you. Uh, power moves will kill you just Doing your own thing will kill you. If you don't have one major breakdown, a way of being completely shut down and um, going under, especially with something old like this, if you can't get the stuff right away, the parts and shit like that to uh, get you back going, if you break down miles away, you could be in trouble. You know, you could, uh, a huge tow bill, then you got your shit sitting somewhere and somebody's going to want to charge you because they're dickheads and assholes and they're just trying to make money anyway. Just like everywhere else. It's highway robbery out there on the road, man. Like... I know I go a little bit crazy because I don't just eat McDonald's or I don't, I don't, you know, cook my own stuff and have a cooler refrigerator or things like that. And some people are like, why don't you have that stuff on you? Because I don't have room in that blue truck. And everybody said, why don't you drive Frank? There's more room in it. Because Frank has issues that I don't have taken care of right now. Frank's a good local truck. Um, I think Frank would be fine over the road, but... Um, you know, until I can get glass cut and uh, the windshield's taken care of to where they don't shift away and then there's a draft and then I'm not worried about them falling out or anything like that while I'm cruising down the interstate, um, that's not happening. Anyways, back to uh, the 90 days. It is expensive to have insurance to be able to drive anywhere you want to across 48. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it costs me about $870 um, a month. So basically, I'm starting over at every month because I pay the bills at the end of the month, get everything ready, and then I have X amount of dollars to start with, basically. And that's what's happened for like the last three months. Now, granted, I have went to the semi-casual show. I spent um, a week doing that. I spent four plus days um, down in Tybee Island, a few days with Garrett. I spent a ton of money there, and that was in the same month of August, so... I haven't always been the wisest with my money and I've had to, you know, buy things here and there and I've spent money on like the bumper and, and uh, those wheel simulators and different shit like that here and there. And um, I don't, I'm not saying that I'm going out and just blowing money because I'm not, but I'm also not going to just eat at McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King or Subway every day that I'm out on the road. I'm going to treat myself because I have worked my ass off and I have worked hard and I'm the only one doing this. I don't have no dispatcher. I don't have no mechanic. I don't have no technician. I have no accountant. I don't have nobody helping me to do anything. I'm no shooter to shoot me while I'm driving down the road or nothing like that. If any videos come out, it's from me. That's why you don't ever get any videos of the truck cruising down the road or anything like that because I don't have somebody riding along with me or I don't have a bunch of different camera angles because honestly, I don't care about that stuff and I don't have time. I'm doing the best I can for you and that's what I'm doing for you and I hope you appreciate it because I mean, I could be doing a lot less or I could be doing nothing at all. You got to understand that too at the same time you know, the same point. I don't make a ton of money off YouTube in a month to where it even matters to me. And I thought I'd grabbed a, um, I grabbed two Reese cups and I thought I grabbed a pumpkin, but I didn't because it is almost October. So Frankenstein could come back out, but I'd have to get some things done. Um, I, I was hoping by now I'd have enough money to save up to where I could get me a flatbed, a decent flatbed, and buy a flatbed and have a side box to put my equipment in and stuff like that. But that's just not happening, man. The spot market is not banging at all. They want to pay you. It's it's hard to get loads that pay even over $2 a mile for what I'm doing, okay? I try to do $2 or above a mile. You know what I'm saying? That's what I try to go for. Um, granted, I have to deadhead or bobtail not deadhead, but bobtail um, from place to place. So I always kind of count that in. And sometimes I'm eating it and I'm like $1.87 um, or around that area. And sometimes I'm buying, I'm, I'm getting loads that basically pay for just the fuel for me to get from A to B. So when I get to B, I can get back home or something like that because you have to realize that uh, people are cheap. 
brokers or crooks. Um, nobody wants to pay you. It doesn't matter how much fuel costs. Fuel is almost $5 a gallon everywhere you go. It's $4.70 plus. Um, down the road, it was $4.79 when I went by on Friday in the morning, and then it was um, $4.65 yesterday because we ran over to my grandson's football flag football game in the morning, and it was uh, $4.65, so it did go down a little bit. Now, here, that's at the Pilots and the Loves and the Petros, you know what I'm saying? You get those big cards, and you get those big discounts if you have them. If you don't, you're like me, you don't get those discounts, so... Um, you know, maybe the uh, the mud flap app to where you can get some change off here and there, but then at the same time, you're paying for a shower. So it's like, does it matter? Does it matter? Does it matter? Doesn't it matter? What I usually do is I'm trying to play the system. If I know that I'm going out and I'm going to be out for a week or two, I just get 50 gallons here or there. That way it can get me from A to B or at least from A to, to B and a half. And um, then I'll throw another 50 gallons in at the places where it's a little bit more expensive. But then I, I double up on my shower. So if I know I'm out for more than a couple of days, if I'm if I'm down south and it's 95 degrees, I'm taking a shower every day, I don't care. So I'll, I'll just get 50 gallons that way, get a shower every time. And I'll rotate places back and forth. Cause like I've got, um, four and a half built up, five and a half built up at um, the pilot. And now once in a while, I'll pop into a loves because sometimes there's always not pilots around, but there may be a loves. So if I need a shower at the loves, I can just do that. You know what I mean? And a lot of times if I'm bobtailing, I'll park in the front of um, the store. I won't even park in the back where the trucks are at because I'm not going to go back there and take up a spot where it takes a whole trailer up and stuff like that. You know, take up all that room to where someone that's coming in, that's tired, that needs that spot. I, I leave that stuff for them. I'll park in the front. It don't matter. If anybody ever says anything to me at a store, I'll explain that to them. Be like, look, I'm not trying to take something away from somebody that needs it. If not, I'll go park somewhere else or I'll take one of these RV spots you have designated for someone that's probably not even going to come here tonight. And who knows who's going to pull in with that, you know? So it's just one of those situations where you got to be mindful of your stuff. Yeah, I'm going to spend about $30 every time I go out to eat, $20 to $30, because if I go to a sit-down restaurant, most time it's about a $20, 15 to $20 bill, and I usually tip about $10. So I'm not trying to be stingy because somebody's out there doing a job, so I'm just going to be helpful, and, you know, I'm going to tip them at least 10 bucks if I have to, so unless they're really shitty service and I, I just get completely irritated and I sit there for a long time. There's been a couple times where I've walked in and I've sat at a bar, and uh, I've sat there for like 10 or 15 minutes before the bartender even acknowledges me. And by that time, I'm like, give me a beer, get me a menu, and get the fuck out of my face because I'm highly irritated. There's no reason for someone to have to sit somewhere for 10 minutes before they get help, regardless of what they look like, you know. It doesn't matter. I'm usually not scrubby when I go into those places. If I know I'm going to a sit-down restaurant, I'll at least try to look presentable and I won't look like I'm all greased up like I do in this outfit and stuff because i have been working on the chalk all day so i'm kind of nasty but that's okay i'm just shooting a little quick video out front of the trucks in my house don't really matter i'm drinking beer oh here comes my wife man she got nothing on she got all damn clothes man she flashing me boy i just seen a titty we want to cut that out Just doing like the 90 day recap video I've been talking about doing forever. She's over here now. She's going to flash me. She's got a robe on. She got a little nighty robe on. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon. Robe. Flannel, robe. Flannel robe. 70 some degrees out and it's four o'clock in the afternoon and she's trotting around in it. It's country living, folks. So yeah, back to it. Um, Woo! No panties on. She ain't got no panties on. It's um, it's not as easy as what it may look. Um, it, it I I've done more vacation trucking than anything, and uh, I'm not like mad about anything. I'm not mad that I I'm not any financially you know better than what I am because I could be. I just got to cut some things out, and the time will come. You know what I mean? Um, I I don't know what I'm going to do. You know whether I'm going to try to hook up with some local companies and, um, you know, maybe just run some stuff from here, like go out, come back. Because one thing I don't do, and that's this is what I haven't, I'm doing power moves. I don't do a lot of loadout trailers where you get a trailer with a load on it, you take it somewhere, and then you can use that trailer for a few days and bring it back. Now, I've done that a couple times, and that's what happened with me 
when I was in, um, when I had that dispatcher, I had that loadout trailer and I ended up getting stuck with it for four days with no loads because she couldn't find me anything. And um, that kind of irritated me with that. And I would rather just A to B stuff. That way I can go from B to C and just have an adventure versus try to find something and go back to where it originally came from. But now I'm at the point to where I, the summertime's almost over. I've kind of lived up my life the best I could for, you know, what I was doing. And miss your wife. Miss my wife and being able to go out and visit people and see them, you know. So now it's the point to where I may be starting to do some loadouts or I may rent a flatbed or rent a trailer or something like that and see if I can't do some more of local stuff, you know, to where I get to come back home and I'm not out spending the money that I normally would. So you have to be mindful of that. If you want to go over the road, um, you know, it's honestly better to look and maybe lease on to somebody that um, does like the power moves like um, trailer transit or um, there's a couple more like that that do that stuff, which I could have done that easily with that truck. But the thing about it is with me is I don't necessarily want to pull heavy ass loads every time I have a load. I like the fact that I can pull empty trailers around and get paid pretty decent. I like the fact that I can get loads that are flatbeds that are about 17,000 pounds and uh, they pay pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? I don't do bad. I like the fact that I can pull those flatbed stack. Um, that's about 34,000 pounds somewhere in that region. I like the fact that I can run those chassis. That's about 80, 38 to um, 40K. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere in that range, depending on what you get and how big they are and this and that. So I like the fact that I can do different things. But at the same time, um, there is days where I get stuck out there or... I get a little jumpy and I, I don't want to just sit for a day, you know, because it's super hot down south. It's been super hot down south. It always is super hot down south. And I've been down there when it's super hot. Now, if I was back up north and I'm sitting, if I have to sit for a day up north, it's not going to be that big of a deal, you know, because it's it's 65, 70 degrees up here. I'm not going to be just like dripping with sweat um, from it being 95 and it being uncomfortable the whole time. So I could honestly do that. But uh yeah, now I'm at the point to where my birthday's in a few days at the end of the month here, so. We're in a few days. Got a couple weeks, babe. A couple weeks. My birthday's in a couple weeks, so I guess we'll see what we're going to do. We're just going to hang out for, um, I, I got home Thursday night, um, slept in my bed, visit the old lady. Uh, Friday, she went to, with me up to Wayne, Michigan. Um, we dropped the load. We went up to uh, the Halloween store, and then sa Saturday went to Asher's football game. Uh, then come back and hung around. We didn't do anything else after that, did we? We did run up town. We ran up town and grabbed some shit. And then like today we haven't left work. yet today. And that truck show was this morning. And someone's like, "Hey, you coming?" And I'm like, "Look, dude, I got to work on the truck. That's most important. If I get over there, I get over there. If I don't, I don't. It's just, it's just what happens, man. I can't always go out and do something. Um, hell, I don't even know if I'll hit any more truck shows up this year or not." There's one down on September 30th in North Carolina, the Bottomley Show that's in Mayberry. There's um, that 104DC.org that's up in Washington, D.C. around the monument the guy wanted me to come to. But honestly, that guy hasn't got a hold of me yet or, or even reached out to me about that show um, and if I wanted to do anything for it. So I, I'm not going to go out of my way for stuff. You know what I mean? The reason why I went to semi-casual is because Roger was going, James was going, Don was going. Those are my guys. You know what I'm saying? If those guys are all going to go to one specific show i'll try to make myself over there you know what i'm saying i was glad to be able to go over there but other than that i could care less my life is a car show i've lived a car show life for the last 20 plus years because i've always had cars that people gawk at or i i just drive down the road and people want to stare at and stuff same thing with the semis man i've done that for the last five years it's really not that big deal me to go to a show to where some snotty ass kid's going to come up and touch my bumper and piss me off because they're, they're slinging stones around and their parents think it's cute or some shit like that. I don't have time for that stuff. Some happens in my truck. Yes, it's my responsibility at the same time. The show holds no accountability for it. That person that they're not, they're not responsible for their kid. And it's, I just don't like dealing with that stuff because there's really not a whole lot of respect left in the world. Now, granted, some people are like, Hey, this and that don't touch that. But at the same time, when I was down at the semi-casual show, I had some guy I was out there eating because um, they had a food thing Friday night. And then we had some poker afterwards and stuff like that, some casino gambling. And um, 
everybody was in this uh, certain area eating. Well, there wasn't any really any room because, you know, people bring like uh, people come in the register and they get one ticket. But yet they've got a whole family with a bunch of kids. And the next thing you know, there's two or three tables full of people with their kids that aren't even supposed to be there. So guys like me can't have a seat. And um, I, I was just like pissed on. I got two beers in my hands. I got two plates of food. I'm just going to the tent that's outside of my trunk to get comfortable and eat and uh, drink and do what I need to. And, and I see some guy walk up as soon as I sit down and he's going to open my door. And I said, what are you doing? So I wanted to see inside. I said, that's not your chalk. That's not your property. Don't put your hands on it. And I that fired me up so much. I almost put my food down and got up and got in the dude's face. But I was like, you know what? I'm eating, I, and I just laid into him. And I said, don't you ever touch anybody's trucks. I said, if you don't have a truck here, and that person's not standing by that truck, and you're not talking to me, you don't have permission, you do not touch that truck, and that's just what it is. So, you know, you have situations like that. I just don't want to deal with it sometimes. I'm just not in the mood. It's not that I'm not a nice guy or anything like that, because I'm the first guy that's going to help somebody out on the road. But at the same time, when I'm around here and it's my stuff, I, I don't like you know, I don't, I don't have time. I'm sorry. It's not like I'm trying to be a jerk or hide my stuff, man. I'm just busy. I'm a busy guy. I'm the, I'm the mechanic. I'm the accountant. I'm the dispatcher. I'm the broker. Sometimes I'm the, um, you know, I'm the everything. I'm the wash by. I got wash the trucks. I got fuel the trucks. I got oil the trucks. I got, you know, do everything. So it's just what it is. Yeah. Do you see that? bird over here there's a bluebird that was in the the stack of frank when i took it for a ride and he uh got blowed out he's dead? yeah he's dead he's a carcass right here right there a lot of flowers and stuff right behind uh, you can you see it uh, no. can you see her in a robe oh, no. yeah she's on camera so that's what's up man um 90 days it hasn't been easy uh, there's been some mentally um, challenges. It's it's mentally tough on you. I've seen a lot of guys that are like, I'm going to do power moves. I'm going to try it out. And two weeks later, they're like, I'm a thanks to my buddy so-and-so for letting me borrow this trailer. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have anything to do because it's not for the weak-minded. Um, trucking, period. If you're an owner-operator, it is tough. And everybody that's an owner-operator knows that. I don't have a team of guys I don't have a bunch of mechanics. I don't have buddies. I don't have cousins. I don't have dads. I don't have, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that that's helping me. I don't have a shop. Uh, I do everything in the driveway if I have to. I mean, versus tires and stuff like that. I'm going to pay somebody to do that stuff, you know. I'm not going to do that stuff myself. I'm not going to do grunt labor like that because I don't want to. Brakes and shit like that. If I had to, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I do have James Pretty if I need to, but that's all the way down in Georgia. I could pull the truck in his driveway and we could work on it. No big deal. But at the same time, that dude's extremely busy too. And he's got umpteen many trucks. So, you know, he's got a life. I got a life. You know, if if you got a life, you understand it. If, if you're just one of those guys that goes and gets in somebody else's truck and turns the key at the end of the day, turns it off and just collects a paycheck and holds the steering wheel, you're not going to understand. A lot of guys don't understand. When someone talks shit to me out on the road and they're like, oh, your truck's a piece of shit, that and that, this and that, I'm like, fuck you, dude. You're nobody. You don't have a fucking clue, pal. If you knew anything, you wouldn't be talking shit to me. First of all, this is an antique truck. You're lucky to even see this thing. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a ghost and a figment of your imagination. When I see DOT and they talk to me and stuff like that, I said, I'm just a ghost from the past. Pass it through, dude. You're lucky you even got to see me in there. Most of the time, they agree with me and they're like, you're right, dude. Rock on. And they don't even bug me. So it's one of them situations where, uh, you know what time it is. We doing it. So I don't know what will happen. Um, there's a ton of videos coming up here and I've got a ton of, um, I, I do have a lot of footage from the past that's coming up that you'll get to see. And I've got some other things coming up from, um, you know, if I get a product sent to me, I'm going to put it out in the middle of the week. Um, I'll save the trucking and stuff like that for Sunday at, or Saturday at seven o'clock, Saturday at seven, Saturday at seven, every week at Saturday at seven, a new video will come out. So, you know, I'll have a video out at least once a week. And if something comes up during the middle of the week, it's probably going to be, um, a product review or something like that. If somebody wants to send me to, you know, something. So, but this will probably come out in the middle of the week because I won't save this because it needs to come out now. 
90 days. I'm doing okay. I'm still alive. I haven't died. I haven't broke down besides um, one episode that's getting ready to come. And uh, that was extremely stressful, but I pulled myself back out. Like I said, I start at X amount of dollars at the beginning of the month. Uh, make sure I pay all my bills at the end of the month and start out at X amount of dollars at the beginning of the month. If I have any extra, I'll pull it out. If I don't, it's just what it is. And that's trucking. Um, maybe I was a little loose and vacationing. I have vacation truck pretty much the whole time. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, I haven't missed any bills around the house or anything like that. So it's not like she ain't mad at me or bitching too much. So you got some of that orange wine? Yeah, when I was down in um, Crossville, Tennessee, I went to a winery across from the pilot. Stone Hoss? Stone Hoss. And um, went to the winery, went to the barbecue place next to it. That's a really nice area to pilot there because you got barbecue, right? You're walking distance. You got across the street, you've got a winery. You've got antique stores, three right by, your, right by that pilot. So that's a really cool place. If you're a truck driver and especially if you got reset on the weekend man you could really hit it off and have a good time it's not always like that so when i was there um the first night went to the winery tried it went to the barbecue ate it then me and roger came back on the sunday and hung out there went back to the winery went and ordered some stuff and had them mail it to the wife because i knew she would like it so i did that for her and we're just cracking open a bottle now about three months later so yeah, I'm, I'm thankful, I'm grateful, and I'm humble. I get to run an antique truck. A lot of people don't get, get to do. I get to live like they were living back in the day. I don't really care that there's no AC in that truck. I understand Frank has more room. Okay, relax. I'm not driving Frankenstein. Yes, I know there's more room. There's two beds in there. There's only one in the blue truck. There's two in Frank, one in the blue truck. There's more room in Frankenstein. I know that. Okay, there's reasons why I'm not driving the Frankenstein. If you really want to know the reasons, go back and watch the videos where I stop trucking. I go through the reasons. There's a whole lot of reasons why somebody like me doesn't want to drive. Diesel fuel's $5 a gallon. They want to give you $1.60 for a rate. If that, some people want to pay you no money. There's, there's loads that are like, 2,238 miles and they only want to pay you three grand or they want to give you 2,500 bucks. And it's like, no dude, absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not running for a dollar a mile. That's not, I'm not, if I'm not making any money, it doesn't make sense to me. Yes. If I have to deadhead, um, 89 miles down to date in two hours to grab something to make, um, a few hundred bucks here and there, I may do it, but I'm not trying to do it all the time. If it's not within um, usually I'll look within 150 mile radius. If I have to go over more than 200 miles, I'm probably going to either break even on a load or barely make a couple hundred bucks on it. And sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And when I first started trucking, that was the one thing that when I went to the training school that I went to back in the day, the, um, my, my instructor told me, this is a tough industry. Not everything's going to work out. You got to do what you got to do to survive, no matter what it is, even if it means breaking the law. So if you got to bust a U-turn somewhere where it's the only safe place to do it because you went down the wrong country road and you got to do something that may not be sketch, you throw your four ways on and you may, you handle that thing and you get where you need to go and that's all you can do. So um, I'm out right now. I'm done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking. I've got a bunch of Snapchat videos from the last couple months I'm going to throw at the end of this video. This is probably going to be a long one. It is what it is. If you don't watch the whole time, it's what it is. Just turn it off. I don't really care. Ads will come. Ads will go. If I don't get paid for the video, that's what it is. Missing. Missing Kim in her robe. Yeah, because she walked in the back here. But, yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about it, um, be smart, be wise. Uh, do everything you can to... You know, make yourself um, it easy as possible and as comfortable for you on the road, whether it be in your bunk, um, buy an inverter, get your refrigerator, do all that stuff, buy Walmarts, water. The reason why I can justify spending $30 at a restaurant at the end of the day is because, A, I don't spend any money at the truck stops on soda, Gatorades, things like that, bags of chips. Uh, box of smokes that cost 20 bucks in New York's 1890 something for a bag of uh, a, a pack of 20 class a cigarettes in in New York the state fuck that I'm not it, smoking tobacco who man you could go broke quick 
And I understand why people don't have anything. I don't buy $2 Mountain Dews. I don't buy, you know what I'm saying, two and a half dollar bag of chips. I don't buy a dollar 85 candy bars at the truck stop. I don't do that kind of stuff. I eat one meal a day. I'm gonna spend all my money on that. You know what I'm saying? If I have a couple beers, what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just do it. So that's what I'm talking about. Just set yourself up for success. That's all you can do. If you don't set yourself up for success, you're just losing. So just be mindful when you're out on the road. Be courteous, be friendly, help every, uh, other people out. And if someone's be a dick to you, just tell them to eat a dick and keep moving on. Till then, you know what we say. Thanks for watching and we will see ya. OG Money working hard to get his windows cleaned here. Look at him! What? You ain't got no washer fluid? I do, but uh, I want sure wipers ain't all that good, so it just smears. Okay. Did you, were you, did you hear me on the CB? Yeah, I, I, I could not you. hear you. I said, I see you over there in that street truck, Bob. I'm coming to see Yeah, you. you were super quiet. I couldn't hear you. Then some girl's like, okay, you're just going to say the same thing over. Did you hear? Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. Oh, that was you? Yeah. It didn't even sound like you. Yeah, it was me. I was Yeah, I was me. Damn long ass fucking thing. That long ass truck. Uh, and that little ass trailer. Back it up, Junior. Oh, he's got the horn. Here he comes, listen to that thing humming, boy. man what's going on just left the b-dubs check out this little thing in the parking lot i thought my shit was the coolest in the parking lot look at this weem i bet that sounds cool going down the road i wonder if it's got one of them little high pitch things wee, 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 wee. bw motor right there in the back but things like weep 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 reminds me of something you'd see on like scooby-doo when they had the globe trotters on or something Oh man, there's a blue truck right there, man. We're walking back out to it. We need to slide on out of here, man. Slide on over to Walmart. They told me I couldn't sleep here. I'm like, cool. Whatever. Actually, they said there's an alley right here I could go down to. There's a self storage right over there. I could probably just pull over there. Yeah, there's already a semi over there, but um, yeah, I'll go with the Walmart. They're open 24. Well, they're open till 11. You know what I mean? So my truck is. um. I don't know if you can see it still right now or not. Right over there. And the beach is right over here. Yeah. That's what's up, baby. Oh, there's a little, this is nice. There's little swings right here. You can sit there and listen to beach water and stuff. Don't look like there's very many people in the water. Oh, the sand's nice and white. 
No alcohol or glass allowed lane. Oh man, look at that baby. Look at that damn shit. Okay, there's something to at least clean my feet off with. I wondered if there was anything. I guess I found something. You know what I mean? Oh, look at that sign. Yeah, all those places. Yeah, get me back on the water, she says. Yellowstone, for when you gotta take a big dump, man. Yeah.